much for that. First uh, order of business is to review the minutes. Previous meeting. Anyone has had a chance to do that? Mr. Chairman. Any? Yes. I have a question. Um, page three. Uh, number two at the bottom half. Is it is it the quantity of parking spaces nine or was it different than that? We're in the overflow. As I remember it, they needed nine parking spaces in order to make all the parking calculations work. They had actually showed us a plan at the site walk that, that showed they had nine overflow parking spaces, and all that condition did was say, could you revise the plan and show the nine overflow parking spaces on the plans you've submitted to the okay. town? Thank you. I move that they be accepted as read. All right. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? <coughs> okay. The minutes have been accepted. Uh, let me just go through the correspondence. Let's see. We have a letter from November, of November 11, 2004, from Perkins and Olson regarding the Carew Amendment to Approve Subdivision. Uh, on behalf of Peggy Chinquette, we have a email of February 28, 2003. <clears throat> hmm. Must be a copy of. Yes. Okay. Was this attached to the letter? No, I provided it to you because it, I believe it's pertinent to what the letter says. Okay. All right. And that's it for the correspondence. Um, we have three items on the agenda tonight, uh, at least one of which is on the consent agenda. And the second issue is the Carew subdivision amendment. Having not seen this letter, that may or may not be on the consent agenda, because I haven't read that yet. And then under old business, we have the U.S. Cellular Tower site plan, and that's scheduled for a public hearing. So let us begin with bottom tide subdivision, subdivision approval extension. This is Joel Fitzpatrick on behalf of Wiley Enterprises, LLC, is requesting a 90-day extension of the subdivision approval for autumn tide subdivision uh, located off Wells Road. Just remind the board that this is a consent agenda item. If anyone on the board wants to have any substantive discussion, they can ask that it be removed from the consent agenda. All right. Then do we have... Uh, do we have a motion? Yes. I have a motion for the board to consider. I move that based on the materials submitted and the facts presented at the request of Joel Fitzpatrick of Wiley Enterprises to extend for 90 days the subdivision approval of Autumn Tides, a five block subdivision located off Wells Road, be approved as a consent agenda item. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay. Um, I just need to take a minute to look at the letter.
Okay. Got a chance to review the letter again. Uh, let me just identify the item. This is a request by Candace Carew for an amendment to the previously approved subdivision located on Arlington Lane to add to the conserved open space located at the end of Arlington Lane instead of conveying the land to the abutter. Uh, again, this is on the consent agenda item. If anyone on the board uh, would like substantive discussion, uh, then we can take it off the consent agenda. Uh, I guess my in light of the letter. Uh, I, oh, I'm sorry. Dave. Normally, when we get this type of objection, it might be appropriate to take it off the consent agenda. Uh, however, if I recall correctly, when we approved uh, Ms. Carew's uh, subdivision plan, the 3,300 square foot strip of property that uh, Attorney David Perkins is referring to was not to be conveyed to the abutter. At a subsequent hearing as a consent agenda item, we agreed to amend the plan to allow for that conveyance. So as part of the original plan that we approved, there was no conveyance of a 3,300 square foot parcel to Ms. Chinchette. Uh, she did, according to this email of February 28, 2003, voiced some objections to the original plan, which did not call for a parcel to be conveyed to her. Uh, she did not, however, to the best of my recollection, appear at a hearing and voice any objections. We approve the original plan that Ms. Carew is now seeking to revert back to. Uh, I think most of the statements set forth in this letter are inaccurate, and I don't see the need, frankly, to have a hearing. Uh, to reconsider a plan that we approved originally. Uh, not yet, no. So I, I don't think I would vote in favor of just simply moving this forward as a consent agenda item given these circumstances. And if I've misstated any of the history of this app application, I'd certainly be happy to hear from other members of the board or from Maureen. But that is my distinct recollection. I think you got the history right. Okay. I also have a full-size plan of the subdivision if the board wants me to put it up on the fourth board. Would anyone like to see the plan? No. Not, not I. <coughs> um, I. David, I guess I, I would tend to agree with you in that if I read the letter correctly, it appears that uh, aside from the email back in February of 2003, the abutter is seeking to raise objections after the fact of an approval that we've already made. Um, what's before us tonight is only the amendment to the previously approved subdivision to add the conserved open space as opposed to conveying it to the abutter. And now that you described the history, that is how I remember it, where this was the original application anyway. So uh, there's really nothing that's changed since, uh, since the original approval of the application. So uh, David. I also agree with you. I, I also look at this as, as the agenda that we have in, on this subject doesn't really have anything to do with the letter we received or vice versa. The letter we received doesn't have anything to do with this agenda, so I don't see why we should change it at this point. All right. Okay. Well, then hearing no request from the board. Yes, David. You want a motion? Uh, yeah, I was going to say hearing no request to take it <laughs> off the consent agenda item. Uh, we'll entertain a motion. A uh, motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the plans and the materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Candace Carew to amend the Carew subdivision located at 246 Ocean House Road in Arlington Lane be amended to delete the conveyance of a strip of land to the abutter be approved as a consent agenda item. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to second. 
Okay, moved and seconded. All in favor? <clears throat> okay. All right, under old business, uh, the application of U.S. Cellular, requesting site plan review, construct a 180-foot tall telecommunications tower off Bowery Beach Road. Um, this is on tonight for a public hearing, but first we can hear from the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Ed Shaw, and I represent LCC International. And uh, unfortunately, tonight I'm here before you requesting that we table this matter until next month. There were a couple of reasons for doing that, and I'd be happy to go into them if you'd prefer, or if you'd just like to um, say that it would be tabled. And, uh... Well, I'd still like to have the public hearing tonight. It was noticed for tonight. So if you could, for the benefit of anybody, if, if anybody did come for the public hearing, can you just summarize where we are on, on the application? And then we can talk about the, what we do next after the public hearing. Terrific. Thank you. Um, um, we went to a walk on uh, Thursday, uh, the day before the application deadline with the uh, um, planning board, it was at 7.30, and we met there. And uh, one of the things that uh, became apparent to me at the time was the um, less than 300 square foot area of wetlands that was being impacted by the way that we had designed it originally would require, according to the local ordinance, a resource protection permit that I was not aware of. The letter that I got from the engineering firm said I did not need one from DEP, but they hadn't reviewed the local ordinance and determined that. In the process of going through what I would need to do to have a resource protection permit, there are quite a few items that need to be put together for that application to be put in front of the planning board. Having said that, I uh, went back to the engineers and the original site plan layout and so, uh, tried to determine whether or not we could change the equipment location at the base of the tower a little bit and rotate it a little bit and not interfere or impact any mature trees but still stay outside of the wetlands area. And we were able uh, to determine that that could be done and those plans are being put together that will be on the application. So there will be no impact to the wetland whatsoever. One of the other concerns that I had was the FAA determination, which can normally uh, be done in 90 days, um, to determine whether or not a tower at that height in that location would require lighting or not. Uh, that normally takes 90 days. I had not heard back, which usually means that there is going to be an extended study, which would take longer, up to six months. However, about four days after the application deadline and we determined that we could not get the application in, I did receive a letter from the FAA determining that a tower at that location at that height does not require lighting. And that's a final determination from the FAA. So I felt a lot more comfortable with what the original proposal was before you folks, and that will be included in the application. Okay. And the final thing that I wanted to mention was there was some discussion about transplanting some local um, trees from the area to, to various locations to help um, block the view from the road. Uh, we talked to a forestry expert and a landscaper and come up with a design where we relocate 15 trees outside of the area, putting them in strategic places in front. That will be included on the application and the plans as well. Yeah, we'd like to see that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. At this time, I'd like to open the public hearing. Uh, I would ask that anyone who would wish to speak, please speak from the lectern and identify who you are and where you live, and we would be happy to hear you. Anyone here for the public hearing? Okay. Close the public hearing. Okay. Um, you want to discuss where we go next with the application? Why don't you? Uh, Mr. Chairman, as I stated before, I was unable to get all of those changes in before the deadline. However, I understand that the deadline is later this month, and I have been told by all of the people involved on this that all of 
the requirements for this application will be accurate and complete and submitted before the deadline for next month's meeting. So if it's at all possible, I'd like to table it for this evening and then bring it up again next month. Okay. Yes, Barbara. Nobody has any questions. I have a motion for the board to consider. Anyone have any questions? I, we, we've discussed this at length at workshop, but yes, Dave. The only question I have is for Maureen. If, if this applicant had to come tonight with all the plans, would those have been available to members of the public to review prior to the hearing? The, one of the reasons we have the submission deadlines we do is that so as soon as we send the notices out, the, any member of the public can come to the town office to uh, review plans. If the applicant had only brought plans to the meeting tonight, it would have been the only opportunity for the public to see them. Although I don't anticipate, based on the lack of a turnout tonight, that we're going to have a lot of people speak, and I am wondering if it would be appropriate, if, and I agree we should table this, but should we give members of the public the opportunity to attend a hearing next month after they've had a chance to see what the final plans look like? And I don't know if we normally do that. Was there anything for them to review before tonight? Right. It, what we had um, was the plans that were submitted last month. The biggest problem with the plans that were submitted last month is they had almost no information related to wetlands impact. So if the applicant had not, he's now telling us that they've revised their plans and they're not going to have a wetland impact, so they don't need a resource protection permit, which tells me that these plans are fairly close to okay. what they're going to be doing. There's probably going to be some shifting around the building, some minor adjustment to the lease area, and they probably will also show some plantings that these plants don't show right now. Uh, the bulk of the information that's missing uh, uh, is information that relates to the tower performance standards, such as um, guarantees by the applicant about co-location, the color of the tower, the color of cabling, that information has not been provided. So, yes, uh, the member, members of the public might be interested in it. Certainly the board could table the application this evening and schedule a public hearing for next month at the same time, and we'll just notice people again. Aren't we, con aren't we continuing an already opened public meeting? That's what I know. Well, it's... <laughs> That happened I, before I realized that it was going to happen. And, yeah, I mean, and, and I'm not. I think David's point is well taken, I, I mean, and I'd like to echo it. I, I think if we're we're seeing a new set of plans, and there may be nobody here, but I, I guess I don't want to. I want to go on record that we're, I'd like to leave that door open um, um, for the opportunity. And I don't know procedurally how you get there, but I'd like to be able to get there. We, we can schedule another. I'm just concerned. I mean, it's not unusual for plans to change after a public hearing. And uh, in, in cases that are probably more contentious than this one, we have had that uh, concern voiced sure. more, more often than not about why don't you have another public hearing and, and then another public hearing because plans changed again. So. Let me ask this question. Did anybody come to the town planner's office to look at the plans that were in existence? No. Okay. Then given that, I, I'm satisfied that there's been an opportunity to speak and there doesn't appear to be any interest. Um, so I'm reversing what, where I was originally going. I think we could proceed without a hearing next month. Okay. Now, did we vote on the motion to the table? No. Oh. Someone offered to make one, but it hadn't got that far yet. <laughs> yeah. Any further discussion or questions of the applicant? Motion? I have a motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans and the materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of U.S. Cellular to construct a 180-foot-tall telecommunications tower located at 95 Bowery Beach Road, be tabled to the regular December 21st, 2004 um, meeting of the planning board. Second. second. <coughs> Moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay. Dave? <laughs> I'm so voted late. It's okay. We'll count it. All right. How about a, a motion, motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn.
New world's record. Second? Second. All in favor? Great. We're adjourned.